Welcome to The Avenue. We are so honored that you're joining us online today for this special message. If you haven't already, be sure to turn on your notifications and subscribe so you receive alerts each time we upload new content. Today we're concluding our series that we've called CORE and we're talking about some essential uh, core values here at the Avenue Church that have been, are, and will always be a staple of who we are at the Avenue Church, that it is important for us to keep them at our core and continue to work these things out because it helps us to establish a healthy church body and helps us to continue to grow. Amen? So if you're looking for a church that's not going to grow, then you're in the wrong church. But if you're looking for a church who will always be a growing church, then here we are. And so we believe in always changing lives of those around us. Amen. Amen. Okay, so today we're going to dissect a scripture that a lot of pastors and churches, we, we pull from this text a lot and use it to supplement the, the messages that we're preaching, and rarely do we dissect this. And so today we're going we're to peel this one back a little bit and dive into Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, if you're new to the Bible, it's in your New Testament, about three-fourths way back in your Bible, you'll see Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. If you get to Acts or Romans, you've gone too far, put it in reverse, put it in reverse, Terry, and... Uh, Back it up, and you'll find Luke. Luke chapter 5. If you know, you know. If you don't, then it's all just, don't even worry about it. Here's what Scripture says, starting in verse, can we have some fun today? Is that all right? Let's have some fun today. Verse 27 says, after this, somebody say after this. Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi, also known as Matthew, sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet, 2022, a party for Jesus. Who? For, for who? Jesus. He, he threw a, I mean, he threw a party for Jesus. At his house. And a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. I mean, it was hype up in there, right? But the Pharisees, the religious people, the teachers of the law, the church who belonged to their sect, complained (laughs) to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous But I've come to call sinners to repentance. All right. If you're taking notes, write this down. The title of the message today is The Best Party Ever. The Best Party Ever. Father, thank you for this moment, for this day. God, for your presence in this house. We thank you for your word. We ask that you would help all of us to open our hearts to it. Lord, will you change us and challenge us? Will you save, deliver, set free, and heal? God, we give you all the glory and honor Thank you for who you are, all you've done, and what you're doing. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 You may be seated. Best party ever. Come on, if you know, you know, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Because <laughs> if, if you don't know that, you ain't been in church long enough. You'll get it, you'll figure it out. If you, if you know, you know. Come on, lean over to your neighbor and say, Party at my place. Party at my place. Are there any, are there any party people in the house today? You know, every, every party needs party people. You know, I'm reminded of, like, high school dances or proms or formals or whatever. Like, you have to have people who, who like to party, who bring party with them. Because if not, you're all standing around awkward, not knowing what to do. And it's just weird. And, but if you have party people in the house, like, they, they come, bring the energy, bring the life. And it gets everybody stirred up and excited and everybody has a good time. We need party people. Yeah. Right? Anybody know any party people? I know some party people in this house. And when I think of party people, I think of people like LaShan Messer. LaShan, where, where is LaShan? LaShan Messer over here on my left. You're right. LaShan, LaShan Messer is a party all by herself. 
and she will, she will have a party with or without you. And if she's going to have a party, you know there's going to be music, there's going to be dancing, there's going to be food. I mean, it's going to be fun because she brings the party, right? I think, I think of also people like people who know how to bring the party is Carmela Grant over here on my left and your right. She, she knows how to bring the party. And you got you to have these people if not... <laughs> You gotta have these people. If not, the room is weird and awkward, and nobody knows what to do with their hands. And it's just like, Let's go. but when you got party people, they bring the funk and they bring the energy, and like, then it's good. And you join right in. Like, we need party people, right? Come on, somebody shout, "Welcome to the party!" Welcome to the party. The best party ever. Now, in this in this text in Luke chapter five, this story of Jesus is considered controversial because his actions would have been offensive to the religious Jews. But it's this story that's going to show us some things. Two in particular. One, it's going to show us that Jesus gives no requirements on being called to follow him. He gives the invite, and it's up to us to respond, right? Secondly, it's going to show us that we are to learn from Jesus and do the same. Reach people and invite them to be a part of the best party ever. All right? So let me give you three things this morning with this text that will help us as a church to have a heart for people and get them to the best party ever. Number one, if you're taking notes, write this down real quick. Number one, people will believe when they know they belong. People will believe when they know they belong. So verses 27 and 28 of our text, it says, After this... After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said. And Levi got up and left everything and followed him. After this, well, what just happened? Jesus had just left a situation where he heals a man and forgives him of his sins. Again, controversial. So after that, after this, Jesus is like, don't tell me that I don't have the authority to forgive sins. You must not realize who I am. I, I have the authority to forgive sins. In fact, watch this. After this, Jesus left there, went out and saw a tax collector sitting at his booth. Okay, so for you to understand this text, you'll not understand it unless you understand who Matthew is. Matthew is a tax collector. Okay? And in those days, he was one of the most corrupt people. Tax collectors would dishonestly take the money of the Jews to give to Rome in the name of taxes. They were selfish, they were arrogant, they were corrupt individuals. It's the reason why you'll read in your Bibles many times, tax collectors and sinners. Tax collectors were considered ceremonially unclean. To them, it was like a different level of sin. Y'all with me 11 o'clock? In other words, they were unfit to ever be used for religious purposes. According to their culture and their laws, being a tax collector would eliminate you from participating in anything religious. It canceled them. It would cancel you from ever being used by God. But Jesus goes over to this tax booth and says, hey, Matthew, follow me. And right there, he calls the worst of the worst, someone with the worst reputation, to follow him. He calls a sinner to belong to him. I can't tell you how many times at this church that we've had people come to our services, come to one of our events, and they're not living right for the Lord, they're not a believer, and they come just to experience what somebody's invited them to come to, or maybe come with questions, or come hurting, or come in pain, or come wondering, and they step in, and because we welcome them, and they feel like they belong here, they then accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and they believe. So many times. Now, there's, there's no way that this is Matthew's first time hearing about Jesus. Jesus had already been causing a huge buzz in the region and people were gathering from all over just to witness what he was doing. So Matthew would have been pumped that Jesus called him. And when Jesus says, hey brother, you belong with me, Matthew leaves everything just to go with him. So watch, the love of God contradicts religion by calling sinners to belong. 
And this right here, it makes the religious people so uncomfortable because reaching lost people can get really messy. But let me remind you that in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, God shows us his love in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So here's three things I need you to get right here about Jesus. One, Jesus is for sinners. Jesus is not afraid of a messy past. And Jesus will always take risks with people. Because Jesus has the ability to look beyond the problem to see the value in people. He's able to look at people for who they are and not by what they've done. Now, I know this is going to shock some people, but it would do us some good to start loving people like Jesus loved people. Matthew was so excited that Jesus called him because he did not have everything right in his life. In fact, his life was a mess. Buckle up, Avenue. Matthew was lost, and he was a sinner. And I've come to put the whole world on notice today. This frees you from ever having to get a resume together to see if you qualify to become a follower of Jesus. So stop trying to get things right before you come to God. Just come to God and he'll help you get things right. Newsflash, the message of this church will always be stop trying to get things right before you come to church. Just come to church and God will help you get things right. How will people ever believe if they don't know they belong? Our wall outside says you belong here. It does not say you belong here if. If you're perfect. If you're already a Christian, if you've never made, made a mistake, if you, were in, if you were not in the club last night, if you've never lied, if you've never been drunk, if you've never talked bad about us, if you've never doubted God, if that's the case, this whole room would be empty right now. Oh, but I've come to tell somebody in the house and somebody who's watching online, you belong here no matter what you've done, no matter where you're from, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've said, no matter what you've been through, you belong here. So come and follow Jesus with us. Oh, come on. Touch somebody and tell them, you belong right here, baby. You belong right here. You belong. Come on online. Talk to me. You belong right here. Somebody shout right here. Right here. Right here. We okay? Yeah. See, culture and religion says, when I find out about your past, I'll shame you and make sure you know that you don't belong here. And that's opposite of the gospel. See, so we've got to reach people with grace and with the love of God. That says, when I find out about your past, the grace I received is the grace that I'll extend so that you know you do belong here. See, the problem we have with a lot of Christians and churches today is we want sinners to get saved. We just don't want to deal with the mess that comes with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We want a cute church where we can take a Hallmark picture after service and everything is banana pudding and sweet tea and sweet shoes and hairstyles. And then we can go home and say, well, wasn't church just so sweet today? Forgive me while I, while I just puke. Like, I want no part of a cute church. No, no, baby. I'm laced up ready for battle. I want to plunder the gates of hell. I want to rescue the suicidal. I want to rescue the broken marriage. I want to be a part of setting someone free from alcohol or depression and sexual bondage. I want to be a part of rescuing sinners from hell and leading them to Jesus. Come on. If you want to be a part of that church, give God a big shout of praise. Come on, slap somebody and tell them, welcome to the party, baby. Welcome to the party. Well, Pastor Jay, aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid of the mess that comes with a sinner? Aren't, aren't you afraid of all the mess that a sinner brings in? You mean, was I afraid when you came to church? <laughs> we already took up the offering. It's okay. No, no, I'm not afraid of that. Because it's what they come with that Jesus has the power to set them free from. Come on, 11 o'clock. Somebody help me preach today. And Levi got up 
and left everything and followed Jesus. People will believe when they know they belong. And once they believe, they will then be set free. Romans 8, verses 1 and 2. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. When someone has a real encounter with Jesus, they're set free from their mess and can leave it all behind. Let me clear my throat. Avenue service announcement calling all sinners. You belong here at the best party ever. So come and leave your life of sin and experience the love and the hope of a Savior named Jesus. Oh, I think it'd be appropriate to get up out of your seat, high five three people and tell them, find me at the party. Woo! Find me at the party. Find me at the party. Find me. Talk to me online. Find me at the party. Welcome to the best party ever. The best party ever. But. But. That's fun to shout to. That's, that's good. Pastor, oh, well, that's good. That's good to shout to. But before I get to my second point, do not get it twisted. Come on, come on. Look, look, at, look at the good looking person next to you and say, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. What, what, do, you, what do you mean? Don't get, don't get it twisted. You do not belong so that you can keep living how you want. You belong so that you can experience God's grace. And please understand this about grace. Grace does not give you permission to keep living a life of sin. Grace gives you another chance so you can defeat that sin. You, you belong here so you can be set free from your past and become a child of God. Yes, come as you are. And once you're here, we believe in the power of Christ according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that calls you out of darkness to begin walking in the light. You belong so that you can believe. And once you believe, you become different than who you were before Jesus. <laughs> Y'all ain't standing up on that one. <laughs> if you give your life to Jesus and it doesn't, hmm, it, if, it, if it doesn't conflict with some of your fleshly desires and cause you to change your life who are you serving you or God if there's not a life change when you give your life to Christ I, qu I got lots of questions <laughs> Matthew got up and left everything to follow him can you imagine some of the others? Jesus, you, do, you, do, you know, do you know who you just... That man's a sinner. He's scandalous. And, and, and Matthew was just so excited that Jesus called... Me? Left everything and followed him. Are you willing to leave everything? Leave it all behind? Who, who you used to identify with? Aww. Who you used to roll with? <laughs> you belong so that you can believe. And once you believe, you become different than who you were before Jesus. People will believe when they know they belong. Here, here's a second one. Y'all love me still? Here, here's a second one. Number two, people will attend when they know they are invited. 
people will attend when they know they are invited. Oh, this is just one of your messages, Pastor. Try to get people to come to church and, and, and so you can grow the church. Duh! I don't want people to go to hell, do you? I want them to get to the house of God and understand that he loves them. I'll never understand... I'm trying. I'm trying to behave. I'm just going to stick to my notes. I will never, I will never understand why somebody gets mad at a large church. Oh, that's one of them big churches. Dang it. Man. People want to go to church, a lot of them. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> you, mean, you mean there's a lot of people that are part of one, one congregation that love Jesus and just want to tell somebody. And tell somebody else. What a horrible thing. How dare you share something what God is doing in your life or in this house. Shameful. And then they'd show up. And now your church is growing. I hate large churches. <laughs> People will attend when they know they're invited. Verse 29. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house. And a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with him. So, so watch this. Matthew gets so excited about what is happening and about being allowed to follow Jesus, that he holds a banquet. Let me put it in 2022 terms. Matthew throws a party at his place for Jesus. Sends out a mass text, gets on TikTok, posts on Instagram, invites tons of people over and says, get the smokers out, baby. We grilling tonight. There's going to be some good food. It's going to be turned up. You don't want to miss it. Whatever you're doing, cancel your plans and get to my house. We throw a party up in here because Jesus is coming over. What? Listen, Matthew was not quiet about this. How do we know? Because... It, it says a, a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. Question. Rhetorical. Every time I say this, somebody answers it out loud. Don't do that. Rhetorical question. I want you just to process it. Don't answer this out, out loud. But when was the last time you got so excited about what God was doing in your life that you decided to throw a party? Y'all remember back in the day, I, I, I didn't ever throw these parties, but some people do like Tupperware parties. And like... You would invite people over. Like Uncle Rico was in the house, and you'd, you'd invite people over and be like, check out this Tupperware. You got to get this Tupperware. They still do that? I don't know. So you, you invite people over, and you show off this Tupperware, and like, then, then, then like people who are watching, oh, that's some good Tupperware. I want some of that Tupperware. And you buy some Tupperware, and then like, it's a Tupperware party. Right? Something, something like that. Or, did they ever throw Avon parties? I don't know. Like, Avon parties, like you just throw a party and like, you throw this party because you want people to come over to experience what you've experienced. When was the last time you threw a, a party just to share with somebody what God's done in your life? That's what, that's what Matthew was doing. He was throwing a party and saying, hey, y'all, y'all, you got to come over. Like, th this guy just changed my life and I want you to, I, I, I'm just going to invite you, you come and let, he'll, let him, he'll. When was the last time you invited that many people to hear about the love and the hope of Jesus? When was the last time you shared your story with someone who needed to hear about Jesus? And when was the last time that you invited someone to church? See, believers should be intentional about inviting others to belong. Because people will attend when they know they are invited. It's why we do things intentionally to reach people here at the Avenue Church. In fact, at the Avenue, that's what we do. We reach people.
people. And we will go the extra mile for Christ and think outside the box. So today, when you leave and, and you pick up your dope, like I, I, I'm, the, next, next week we're kicking off our big September evangelistic series, and it's outside the box. It's different than anything we normally do, and um, even like we do everything normal anyways, but we're, we're go, taking the extra mile, and like it's, it's going, to, going to be super evangelistic and reaching people who are far from God and like where they are. Here's the deal. If we don't invite anybody, it's going to be super awkward up in here next week. I need some party people who are the Matthews who will go out and invite some people to be at church. Listen, there's no excuse and no reason why this place should be an overflow next week. If everybody here would invite just one person, we've got a good problem on our hands. If every person, so if you invite somebody at 9 o'clock and they say they're coming at 9 o'clock, guess what? That's when you're coming, 9 o'clock. If you invite two people, one's in one, one the other, you're coming to both services. Hey, why not take them out to lunch? Why not in that moment share with them what God has done in your life? And now he's changed your life. Like you need to stop by the door on the way out today and like pick up a whole stack of these and just be inviting everybody because we're believing that the harvest is ripe and the harvest is ready and that when people get in here next week, they're going to experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit and they're going to hear the word of God and their life is going to be forever changed all because you are a Matthew and said, hey, I'm throwing a party and you need to come and experience what God can do in your life. Come on, somebody say a big amen right there. But, here, but here's the deal. George Barna... His research shows us that 9 out of 10 believers feel like they did a horrible job sharing their faith with a non-believer. Which causes them, which causes us to not share it as much. Because in the moment we think we're going to freeze up and we're going to say something weird. And that person's going to look at us weird. And then you're going to feel weird. And you're going to walk away going, well that was weird. And then, and you're thinking, well... I don't know if I just led that person to heaven or sent them to hell. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> and so then what happens is you just don't share your faith. And people don't hear what God is doing in your life. Get this, church. When you've had a life-changing experience, people really do want to hear about it because they want to experience that too. Nine times out of the ten, they're not going to walk up to you and go, I need Jesus! No. But when you share with them what God has done in your life, they're listening. And they really do want to experience some kind of life change for themselves as well. Amen, somebody? Amen. Three weeks ago, I shared with you a story about a, a man in our church by the name of Chris Jordan. And how three weeks ago, um, he was celebrating five years of being alcohol-free and set free. Y'all remember that three weeks ago? I shared that with you. You know, it's crazy because in that first year, we, we, we recorded his testimony. And it's, and it's been like... It's been viewed and liked and shared like something like over 30,000 times. I mean, it's still being shared and people are still talking about it today because they really do want to celebrate and experience, hey, this guy had a life change. How? What happened? Who did he meet? Who did he encounter? It's still having impact on people today. So check this out. A man in our church, his name is Dalton Winston. He hears this testimony, and on day one of our 21 days of prayer and fasting, this time around, he said to me, I'm going to come to every day of prayer and fasting. He's been struggling with addiction, and every day he has shown up for prayer and fasting, and today is day 21, and he has not had one sip of that alcohol from day one. God is setting him free. Come on. Can we celebrate what God is doing in people's lives right here at the Avenue Church? Woo! That's what it's all about. And so check this scripture out. In Matthew chapter 5, you've heard it probably read several different ways. I want to share it with you in a new way from the message translation. I love how this, it kind of picks it apart right here. In verse 13, it says, let, let me tell you why you're here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? Ah, you've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light and bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. Uh, we're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a lampstand. Now that I've put you there at a hilltop on a, on a light stand, shine! 
Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt other people to open up with God. This generous Father in heaven. So good. Mark chapter 16 verse 15 says it this way. Jesus said, go into the world and preach the good news to everyone. As believers, we've got a responsibility to invite others to belong and believe. So don't you dare be intimidated to share the good news of Jesus. Don't you dare be shy about sharing with others about what Jesus has done in your life. For it's the message of Jesus that changes people's lives. That's the power of the gospel. Matthew was a sinner and had a reputation, which means that every sinner has a reputation. And when a sinner gets saved, it changes other people Come on avenue please get this someone else's miracle is simply waiting on you to share your message with them why because a changed life changes lives and what Jesus did for Matthew should let everyone here know that your past does not cancel you from God's purpose in fact it's your past that gives your message power so when God saves you that's powerful and when God sets you free from drugs that's powerful and when God takes that depression away that's powerful and when God restores your marriage that's powerful you've got a message and that message should be come join the best party ever I've met someone who's changed my life and if he can change my life he can change yours too if he gave me hope he can give you hope too if he set me free he'll set you free if he picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet back on solid ground he'll do it for you too won't he do it avenue if he did it for me he'll do it for you all surely i could find about a hundred people up in here who's been forever changed because of jesus and now you've got a message to let other people know if he did it for me he'll do it for you too Oh, come on, get up out of your seat, find four people and tell them if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. If he did it for me, come on online, talk to me. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. (laughs) If he called somebody like Matthew, he's calling you too. People will believe when they know they belong. People will attend when they know they're invited. Here's the last one. I'm done. Number three, people gain hope when the church never gives up. People gain hope when the church never gives up. Verses 30 through 32, but the Pharisees and the teacher of the law who belonged to their sect, complained to his disciples. To who? To his disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but I've come to call sinners to repentance. Why are you eating and drinking with sinners? Why are you at this party with these people? And by their question, they've already given up on these people. Now understand this. This party would have made Jesus ceremonially unclean. You've got to understand the times, the culture, and the law. It would have made him unfit for ministry. Jesus. According to their, their laws... Jesus hanging out with these sinners would would have disqualified him. But Jesus, he loved to party. (laughs) Spoiler alert! If hanging out with sinners makes Jesus unfit for ministry, then I will be unqualified every single time. Because this pastor is always going to seek out lost people. Oh, you'll never believe who I saw 
the pastor of the avenue at the ball game with, hanging out with those scandalous people. You, you'll never believe who I saw the pastor of the avenue sitting with at, at, at the restaurant. I can't believe that he would hang out with those types of people. I've never been happier to say what I'm about to say. I am guilty of it and proud of it. Because they will never care to hear what I know for them until they know just how much I care about them. So I will keep loving them. And I will keep listening to them. And I will keep being willing for them to get mad at me. And I will keep hanging out with them. And I will give them an opportunity to share their story with me. And at the right opportunity, I'll share my story with them. And it's a message of hope and love and healing and second chances that if God never gave up on me, He'll never give up on them. Oh, come on. Surely there's some people up in here who's glad to be ceremonially unclean so that you can reach a lost and a hurting world with the love and the hope of Jesus. Woo! Come on, church. We can never give up on people. Verse 30. Why do, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Man, Reading this story, we have missed it for so many years as churches around the world. I understand 1 Corinthians when it says, bad company corrupts good character. I do, I do understand that. But don't, 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 don't misunderstand me, okay? Fo follow me right here. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Who are they talking to? Jesus? No. Read it for yourself. They said it to the disciples. They didn't have the backbone to say it to Jesus. <laughs> so they say it to the disciples who were with Jesus. And so if they said it to them, it means that the disciples were at this party too. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Are we okay, 11 o'clock? In other words, don't you know who you're hanging out with? We've canceled these people. Society has canceled them. So you should be ashamed of yourselves for hanging out with them. And the problem that we've got with some churches and Christians in our world today is that there are way too many snot-nosed, holier-than-thou religious bubbles who have lost their salt. We can't forget who we are. So, so what we've got now are Christians and churches who take scriptures like bad company corrupts good character. Yes, I get that and I believe that and I practice that in my life. There are some times at some point you've got to say, I'm disconnecting from this circle because of how it's affecting my life. But where we have crossed the line way too far is that we see, well, we're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. But what we've done is that we're not supposed, we're, we've, become, we've become pros at being not of the world. And we have completely removed ourselves from the world. When we're supposed to be in the world. You want to know why our world is in chaos like it is? It's because the church and believers have removed ourselves from the world and we've hid in a sacred place called the church in mountains and caves afraid of what we've got because we don't want to lose what we've got. Listen, if your salt and your light and the gospel that you're sharing is that weak, what light are you sharing? And what gospel are you sharing? Because the light that I know and the gospel that I live by has the power to penetrate every heart and every life and every piece of darkness and bring light life into every situation
and I, and, I, and, I look at, and I look at you young people. And like, I know you're up against it. I, I know you are. But let me, let, me, let me help you. Let me take the pressure off of you. Everybody loves to say, oh, well, this generation is just, man, they're facing so much more. I don't mean to burst your bubble. But you're not. We've given the voice, we've given the, um, the microphone to the wrong people. And unfortunately, the people who have the microphone right now are the loudest. It hadn't changed. The same crap you're up against, pardon me, the same stuff you're up against right now is the same stuff that we face when we was growing Man, there's some hippies up in this room that blazed them back in the 60s and 70s, and they're here. You think you're up against something they ain't never met before? Oh, Pastor, don't talk that way. No, I'm just being real with you. Like, I know you're up against, like, perversion and, and, and pornography and, and drugs and alcohol and peer pressure, but so was I. And so were they. And I've got some good news for you. The same power that brought me through it will be the same power that will bring you through it. Woo! The same anointing of God that's hit my life and hit their life will be the same anointing that will hit your life. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost up in this house today. Ah, ah. I need every young person under the age of 25 to get down to this altar right now. Every young person under the age of 25. Come on, 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 come on. I need some prayer warriors. I need the altar team. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Woo! I feel the Holy Spirit in this house right now. Jesus. Y'all, y'all, y'all come on. I didn't put this thing in my notes. Uh, y'all shift this way just a little bit. There's some young people in the eye. Hey, church, look at look at this. Look at this. Y'all get down this aisle. Y'all get down this aisle. Spread through. I, 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 I didn't say that over there to like, well. No, I'm, I'm trying to encourage you. There's some victories in this room who have been where you are and have walked through the fire like you're walking through. church now you know now you know why the enemy is out for them there's a future and a plan and a purpose for every one of these young people right here <laughs> hey just hey, young people just by the show of hands how many of y'all are feeling the weight of like what's going on in our world today? Like just the pressures of, of life, the, 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 the struggles, the temptations, the, the battles. Like how many of you feel that weight? Y'all, I got good news for you. If you feel that weight, it's a, it's a good, let that be a praise report. Yeah. If you feel that weight, it's because God wants to use you for something greater. <laughs> did you face temptation? Did you face him? Did you? Did, did, did y'all ever face temptation like drugs and alcohol and like perversion and all, all that? I mean, the, everything. Y- y'all, nobody up here didn't face it. Has anybody here ever not faced temptation and not? I didn't think so. Because if you raise your hand, I was going to call that lying spirit out in the name of Jesus.
God's got a plan for you, bro. And I've been, <laughs> I've sensed this all service for you. And I watch you. I watch you in, not, not in a creepy way. <laughs> I watch you when you're at school. And I watch you around other people. And I ask about you. Because you've got influence you didn't even know you had. You know, you know how I was talking about like, we all need some party people? We need some party people the right way. We need some Matthews that are not afraid of being who you were created to be and step into a room and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. Yeah, you're coming to this party because I want to share with you what God has done in my life. I'm telling you, you're, you're a type of person that if you'll get on fire for Jesus, your whole school will follow after you. If you're, the, you're the type of person that if you get sold out for Christ, people will go, hey, man, hey, you you heard what's happened in so-and-so's life and they're like no I hadn't heard and then and, they'll, and, they'll, and that person will, hey what's going on in your life and you'll be like let me tell you I'm telling you you're the type of person that if you'll get sold out for Christ your whole school will change Write this down today. August 28th, 2022. If you'll go all in with Jesus, I mean all in. Not caring about who's watching, who's going to say what, who's going to be this to you, who's going to be that. If you'll go all I'm telling you, you mark the calendar and you watch how your whole circle will change. And how you'll have an impact on an entire football team. And you'll have an entire impact on a school. If you will do it, I'm telling you, if you'll do it. Mark, mark it down. Mark it down. How, how many of you believe that this, this generation has a plan, has a purpose, and there's an anointing for them to bring light into a dark world. And they can change their families, they can change their schools, they can change this region. Come on, I wanna ask our prayer team, young people, if you're, if you're willing to say, Lord, I'll be a Matthew, Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, however you want to use me, I'll bring light into darkness. If that's you, young people, will you lift your hands right now in this, in this, in this altar? Come on, lift them up. Lift them up. Hey, prayer team, will you just get some anointing oil and just go through and just lay your hands on them? Just lay your hand. Come on, church, pray for them. Come on. Come on. Just, just, just begin to lay your hands on them. Move to the next one. Move to the next one. Father, I thank you. Come on, church. Come on, church. Pray for these young people like it's your home. Come on, pray for these young people like it's you right now. Father, you see these young people. Lord, you see them in the elementary. You see them in middle school. You see them in high school. You see college students right here. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we lift them up to you. Come on, church. Don't just listen to me pray right now. Come on. Y'all pray with me. Y'all intercede with me. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, will you pour out your anointing on this generation? Oh, God, will you fill them with a passion for more of you, God? compassion for people God will you give them a backbone to stand up for what's right in the face of adversity oh God when temptation rises let them set their feet firm and rooted in the word of God oh Lord to make decisions that are pleasing to you oh God give them a holy discontentment Give them a holy discontentment for the things of this world. God, help them to step into the world, but not be of the world and bring light in every situation. Come on, church. Come on, church. Y'all sing. 
Come on, blessing and honor. Blessing, honor, glory, power. Come on, young people. Come on, young people. Go after Jesus right here. Come on, go after Jesus right here. for you. Right here in this moment, Lord, will you, will you supernaturally set their hearts on fire for you? That when they leave here, all they can think about is how they can change the world for you. Lord, when they wake up in the morning and their first thought is on you. Lord, when they step in their hallways tomorrow at school, that your love would flow through them and your anointing would flow through them and your favor would rest upon them. Oh, I plead the blood of Jesus over every mind. I plead the blood of Jesus over every life. 
<laughs> and I declare the name of Jesus in every circumstance. I bind every demonic spirit from hell that would try to come and exalt itself against the name of Christ in their lives. I bind every spirit from hell that would try to bring them down in the name of Jesus. And we declare freedom over this generation. We declare that this is going to be the generation that's going to see the greatest revival in this country that we've ever seen. That you're going to use them and pour out your anointing on them, their sons and daughters, in the name of Jesus. That you're going to raise up leaders in this world right here in this altar in Jesus name set them on fire for you God come on church is he faithful is, is there anybody here who could testify with me that you've been through some stuff and you've walked on some mountaintops and you've walked through some valleys you've been through some good times and you've been through some bad times you faced some giants in your life but you're standing here today as a living testimony that if he can do it for you he'll do it for them oh anybody in the house today thankful that you're not where you used to be and you're not doing what you used to do, but you've experienced the power and the presence of God. Oh, why don't you give him praise for his faithfulness in your life? Woo! Hey, young people, you're gonna make it, and you're not gonna just survive. You're gonna thrive. You walk out of this place today knowing who you are and who God is. That if God is with you, who can be against you? Mm. If Jesus can tap a tax collector and say, hey, come follow me, what do you think he can do with you? Might I say, you already have an upper hand on Matthew. Matthew had no idea who Jesus even was. Most of y'all know the story of the power of Jesus. And you're already in church. And most of you are already following Jesus. If Jesus can call somebody like Matthew... What can he do with somebody who woke up on a Sunday morning to come to the house of God to worship the Lord who already knows Jesus? Oh, God, I thank you for this generation. I thank you for how you're going to use this generation. sense the presence of the Lord like I do today what, what would happen what would happen if parties started breaking out all over East Tennessee you know usually you hear about parties and the cops show up somebody's mom or daddy gets called you get kicked out of school you get in trouble and you got to call one of us and now we're having a meeting with your parents because you did something stupid what would happen if a bunch of crazy radical teenagers who started throwing parties for Jesus what would happen if like you got on the phone and said, hey, y'all come over to my house Friday night. Why? No, you just come. I didn't ask you. You're coming over to my house. We're going to have a good time. Friday night. Okay. You're going to feed them? I don't know. Have some pizza. I don't know. What would happen? What would happen if, like, you got on fire for Jesus? Yes, you. Like, Carmela brings the funk. She knows how to bring the party. But Shane, you know how to bring the party? Like, bring the, be the party wherever you are. Like, Every one of you young people know exactly what I'm talking about when I say when you're at dances or proms or formals and 
nobody knows what to do when y'all are all acting awkward and weird. But what would happen if like you got so passionate about Jesus, like you brought the party everywhere you were and people wanted to be around you just because of who you have and you become contagious to your family, you become contagious to all your sinner friends and you become contagious to your schools and, and revival started breaking out in your classrooms. And what would happen if some young people got that passionate about Jesus? What if you got as passionate for Jesus as you did TikTok? What if you got as passionate for Jesus as you do your video games? What if you got as passionate for Jesus as you do YouTube? Like what, what would happen man, if you got as passionate for Jesus as, as you do sports? Like what would happen if you flipped the script and like you got, you made that the priority and everything else was just wherever it may be? Like what would happen? That's called take the limits off. Take the limits off to what God could do. I didn't plan this church. I don't apologize. I'm speaking to this generation because I believe in this generation. I believe that God wants to use them. I'm sick and tired of the enemy. Uh, ah, I'm sick and tired of us feeling like the enemy has the upper hand. No, no, we're flipping the script today, baby. No, 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 we're flipping the script. We, we are the head and not the tail. We are above and never believe. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation set apart for God. Pastor Justin, get the young people excited for Jesus. When's the last time you got that excited for Jesus? When was the last time, instead of saying, hey, I gotta go to work tomorrow? Like, when was the last time you drove up at your job site, walked in, and said, man, whew, let me tell you about what God's doing in my church? Let me, let me tell you what. Let me tell you what God's doing in my life. Like, when was the last time you had eyes rolled at you because you shared Jesus too much? Like, when was it? The... You know why I'm so passionate about it? It's because there's some people in your life in your life, family, friends, teammates, co-workers, there are people in your life that if they don't change their life for Christ, they're going to hell. There's people you're connected to on a daily basis that if they breathe their last breath today, they're going to hell. The question is, do you care? Do you care? That's, that's the question. That's why we're unapologetic about how we roll in September. We will do whatever it takes to reach people who are far from God. And I'm asking you, young people, I'm asking you, adults, seven days, let's do everything we can to invite people to experience the love and the grace and the mercy and the hope of God. You get them here, let the Holy Spirit do the rest. You get them here, let the power of the presence of God do the rest. You be light seven days a week, get them here. Get them here. Get them here. Get them here. I know I got to get you out of here. Before we leave. some Matthews in the room today there's some Matthews in the room today that you feel like God you could never accept me or you could never there, there's some Matthews in the room that you think you have no place in heaven because you've messed up too many times there's some Matthews in the room that think that you, there's no way that you could ever make it because you've, you've made a mess of things but I'm here today to tell you that Jesus is calling you he's calling you leave everything follow Jesus I'm telling you it'll be worth it so with every head bowed every eye closed please no one moving no one no one looking just our altar team 
if you're here in this house or somebody with us online, and maybe you're saying, Pastor Justin, I just feel so far from God. Maybe you've never known Christ as Savior, or maybe it's been a long time and you've walked away from God, and maybe today you need to recommit your life to Christ, whatever the case may be. Please, I want to give you the opportunity right here, right now, to pray with me, right there where you're standing. You say, Pastor, please pray that prayer with me. I need God in my life. Just right there where you are on the count of three, just lift that hand so I know who I'm praying with. Come on, one. Come on, who's the Lord dealing with right now? It's a good thing. Two. You're here, you say, Pastor Justin, I want life and not death. I want heaven, not hell. Come on, three, lift that hand up. Lift it up. Thank you, thank you. Come on, keep that hand up. Thank you. Heads bowed, eyes closed, please. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Thank you. Those of you who lifted that hand, I want you to pray this with me from your heart and from your mouth. Somebody online, hit that emoji right there so we know we're praying with you. I want you to pray this from your heart and your mouth. Abby, let's join him. I want you to say, Jesus, I need you. I'm lost without you. I'm a sinner in need of grace. And I believe in you. And I confess, Jesus, you are Lord. Forgive me of my sins. And from this day forward, when problems happen, I'm not running from you. I'm running to you because you're my Savior. In Jesus' name. Come on, church. Can we give God a big praise right there? Come on, Avenue. If this message spoke to you today and you took your next step of making a decision to know Christ, we want to celebrate with you and walk this out with you. Simply click the link in the comments below and a pastor will reach out to you and celebrate the greatest decision you have ever made. At The Avenue, we know that we're stronger together, everyone matters, and you belong here.